horses go? Guess what I have. I have a secret for you. I have a friend from Philly. Man, I wish I had hands like him. His hands are the hands of a maiden goddess. He's got some great hands. He's got some great ideas. And the moment I met this guy, he was doing some of the dopest stuff I've ever seen. My, my friend Tony introduced me to him, and he's like, you gotta, you gotta meet this kid. And I met him, and he showed me a trick. <laughs> it, was, it was so beautiful. And I still can't do it. He, he actually has something on Lost Art. If you don't know Lost Art Magic, that's my website. It's my company site that I sell magic on. And this kid's name is Dennis. Dennis Kim, the, the god. He doesn't, people don't know that he's the god, but I guess that's what gods do, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Check out his Instagrams and all that stuff. All the links will be in the description, description below. Go show him some love. And right now he's gonna show you how to do a uh, Le Paul spray. That's how they say it in French. I've seen a lot of people do Le Paul sprays. I can't do one that good. Mine is all clunky like me. But he does this so smooth, like everything. Let's go check him out. Dennis, give it to him. Alright, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do the Le Paul spread. It's a really fun move to do. It's also an excellent way to break in your cards in conjunction with a bunch of riffle shovels and whatnot. I like to do this just casually. It's a very nice fidgety move. You can use it to like kind of have a selection made, but I like to just do it as like a kind of yeah, just a fidgety move. Do you have people select cards with it? No. Thank God. No. Thank gotta gotta keep, keep consistent, you know? And so. this is why I have faith in humanity. <laughs> Here's what it looks like. Jesus. Um, and I like to add that little spin, which I'll go over as well. So basically, you're gonna have all four fingers, index, middle, ring, and pinky on one side, and I like to keep it closer to the bottom half, right? And then the crotch of your thumb is gonna be at the bottom here as well, at the lower, right? And basically, you're gonna squeeze the deck so it's kind of creating a convex shape. You're going to basically spring the cards. So there's a lot of tutorials on the card spring out there, so if you're not familiar with that, go check that out first. But basically, you're just gonna spring and they're just gonna riffle off one at a time, right? Like this. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. When you start off, this requires a lot of finger muscle, so it's gonna it's gonna feel a lot clunkier at first. Like a bunch of cards are gonna come off your well, Paul spread might look I don't know like like mine. The more you get used to it, it's all basically just finger muscle. It's a great way to exercise your hand. It's kind of like those uh, hand flexor. You just squeeze and make sure one card comes at a time. So when you catch the cards, right, you want a nice wide grip, right? You're ready to almost as if you're catching a spring as well, right? Like when you're spreading the cards. Your fingers are wide open, right? You can see that, right? S spread wide open as far out as you can, and you want to do the same with that LaPaul spread. You can see, right? So. Do that again. Right. Open it, open it. Oh, it's so <laughs> And you're really going through with the deck. Like the whole deck is being right. been through. Like you're not hesitating. Yeah. Wow. That's from years of doing it, though. So, like I said, it's going to be really clunky at first, but. It's all in the, in the finger muscles, right? And the key part is the crotch of the thumb, right? That's what's providing that stability, and it's gonna allow you to give you that base to like smoothly riffle the cards off, right? And make sure that your fingertips are at the very edge of that top card, as you can oh, see, right? But so, you're also really low, like right. you're not up here. Yeah, this helps because my finger muscles are also not the strongest. I think a lot of people mostly do it up here, but I feel that that kind of loses stability at the bottom half of the deck. Mm -hmm. So when you do it out here, uh, in the bottom, the cards are going to jot out more outward, if that makes sense, right? So I'll do it from the bottom, just like so, yeah. and the cards are out more. But if I do it from the, the top half here, like most people do it, um, it doesn't come out as far, if that makes sense, right? You can kind of see the cards yeah. wanting to go downwards, right? Yeah. So it's best if you start here, hmm. right? and ripple out, right? So it's just that squeezing motion, right? Same kind of concept and motions as a spring. So what I like to do to close the LaPaul spread is once I come here, I close it out, and now my index finger and my thumbs are pinching both sides, and I rotate it like this, right? And then I turn this over in my other hand, and then do a half deck flip. Right? So in full motion, it gives a very nice 
continuity to the spread, <laughs> right? Kind of makes a little presentation out of it. Do so. that again. <sighs> That's the little Paul spread. His hands are like <laughs> butter. <laughs> like like butter on the, in the morning. Go, Dennis. Ah! So there you have it. There's the Dennis, the Kimster. This guy's ridiculous. So now you know how to do a La Paul spread. So check that out. Practice that. Play with it. Go, go follow him on his social media because he's awesome. If you like what I'm doing here, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you do, what kind of problems you had with the La Paul spread. And let me know how awesome Dennis is. So I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to keep doing our thing and drinking. So peace out. Ah!